What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender tool tutorial for you today. So in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about vertex groups. We're going to talk about what they are and how you can use them to do various things inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so vertex groups are basically exactly what they sound like. They're groups of vertices that you define inside of your model. And then once you define them, you can do different things with them. So let's say, for example, um, first off, if we tab into this model right here, and we hit the one key, that's going to put us into vertex select mode. And as you know, vertices are the little points between the edges that make up the faces inside of Blender. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to select a couple of these vertices and then store that selection. Well, what we could do is let's go to top down view first off. And I'm just going to select some of the vertices on this model. So you can see how I have these selected right here. Well, there's an option down below for object data properties. Object data properties is going to be where you're going to manage your vertex groups. And so right now, for example, I have this series of vertices from my Bonnie model selected. And I'm just going to click the plus button right here in order to create a group from those vertices. So we're going to start by creating the group. And then with these selected, we're going to click on the button for assign. And so as soon as you select the option for assign, what that does is that takes the vertices that you have selected and it assigns them to this group. Well, now what that means is that means that we can come in here and we can click the select button and those vertices are going to show up, right? You can also click the deselect button to deselect them. And so a couple things about that. First off, you can add or remove vertices from the group. And so let's say I didn't want these vertices assigned to this group. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to select them like this. And then I'm going to click on the button for remove. And so when I click on the button for remove, what that's going to do is that's going to remo remove those vertices from this group. So now if I click on select, you can see how these vertices on the edge are selected, but not the ones on the top. So you can also add vertices just by doing a shift click or just by selecting these and clicking on the assign button. And so we could double click in here and we could name this like back or something like that. And then let's say that we wanted a different vertex group in here. Well, we could come in here and select these like this. And then we could create a new vertex group. We could call that one nose and then click on the assign button and so if we look at this now i have two different vertex groups both of which i can select just by clicking on the select or deselect button and so you can also lock these just by clicking on the lock button that's going to make it so you can't assign or remove anything to those vertex groups so once you have a selection set up the way that you want you can lock that so that you don't have to worry about it anymore if you decide that you want to do that so now let's talk about why this matters so the reason that this matters is because you can do a lot of interesting things with vertex groups once you select them. So, and what I want to do is let's start off by, let's add another model. So I'm going to tab back in object mode. I'm going to do a shift A and I'm just going to add a monkey. So I'm just going to add a monkey over here. And so I'm just going to tab in here and I'm just going to select the vertices associated with the monkey's head. So in this case, that's going to look something like this and then we're just going to create a vertex group and call it head. We're going to click on the button for assign and so what that's going to allow us to do is that now gives us a group of vertices that we can reference with other tools. So if I click in here for example and let's say I wanted to add a particle system like a hair system what we could do is click over into our particles click the plus button And we're going to click on the button for hair. And so you can see how right now what that does, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the length down, is it applies hair to everything on this model, right? So you can see that's showing up everywhere on here. Well, in this case, we don't want to add hair to everywhere. We just want to add it to the monkey's head. Well, what we can do is we can scroll down to the vertex groups option, and you can select the head for things like your length, for your clumping, for all of those different things. So you can set this so that this is only applying this hair 
to that vertex group. So notice how that's only showing up on the monkey's head. And so in addition to being able to use things like particle systems, there are other tools like modifiers that will also reference these different vertex groups. So let's say for example that I was to add a plane. I'll just move this over. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna subdivide it and we'll call it 10 cuts for right now. And then we'll tab back out of this. So if we were to take this plane and we were to apply a modifier to it, so let's call it a wireframe modifier like this. Well, you can see how what that does is that takes the whole thing and it makes a wireframe out of the edges that are in here, right? But you can see how down below there's an option for vertex groups. So what that means is that means that not only can you apply this to the whole thing, you can also apply this to a selection that you have. So if we were to tab into edit mode, select some of these objects and then create a vertex group for them. So we'll just call this edges and click on the button for assign. So what we've done is we've created a vertex group right here, right? Well, what we can do is we can tab back into object mode and then reference that vertex group right here. And so notice how what that's doing is that's mostly applying this to this object right here. Now I do want to point something else out about the way this is working. So currently what this is doing is this is actually weight painting the object based on those vertices. And what that means is that means if you were to tab back into edit mode, and in fact we want to go into um, weight paint mode, you can see how what this is doing is this is actually applying a weight paint to these objects over here. And then that's giving us a fall off over here. So. Basically what this does is if you were to look over into your vertex group under edges right here and let's tab back into edit mode for a second. What that's doing is that's applying a weight of one to these objects. Well, if you were to drag this down like this, type in a value of 0.5, then go back into weight paint mode, whoops, and click on assign and then go back into weight paint mode, you can see how instead of this applying the red value to this, it's applying a green value to this. Meaning what it did is it applied a weight of 0.5 in here. Well now, if you go back into object mode like this, you can see how you're getting a slightly different result because this only has a weight of one applied to it. We could adjust this and assign this back and then if we look at this, you can see how you're getting a stronger wireframe over here. So you can use this weight painting to do a lot of interesting things as well. So another thing we can do is let's say we were to add another plane. So we're going to add a plane over here. We're going to go ahead and subdivide this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and subdivide it one more time, just with one more cut. Well, if we were to go over into our modifiers, there's actually modifiers in here for vertex weight edit or vertex weight proximity. And so what that modifier is gonna do is that's gonna allow us to make a change to this object based on the proximity to another object. So you can see how when we mouse over this, this says that this sets vertex group weights based on the distance to another target object. So if we click on this, this is gonna ask us for two things, right? It's gonna ask for a vertex group which we haven't created yet, and a target object. Well, if you were to tab into edit mode and select all the vertices and add a vertex group for them, and we'll just call it points, and we'll assign this. Well, now within this modifier, you can grab that points group right here. And so now what we need to do is add a target object. So I'm gonna tab back into object mode, do a shift A, and let's just add a UV sphere. That'll be fairly simple. We're going to scale this down. We're going to apply that rotation and scale. And now we're going to click to set that sphere as our target object. And so right now you can't see anything, right? So um, you, you can't see any kind of weight painting or anything like that. But if you were to go over into weight paint mode and look at this, you can see how nothing interesting is happening yet. And so instead of having this set to proximity mode of object, you want to set this to proximity mode of geometry. Well then, notice what you can do is you can adjust this so that this is weight painting this object based on the location of the sphere. So if I was to tab back into object mode for a second, 
and then move this around and we'll just keep this on the flat axis and then look at the weight paint mode whoops you can see how this is weight painting this based on the location of that sphere well the cool thing about that is that moves live right so the weight painting is being adjusted based on wherever the sphere is at any given time well then you can do some interesting things so for example we could within this object right here add a displace modifier well what the displace modifier does is it displaces the object right it moves it in 3d well we don't want the whole thing to move in 3d right the only thing we want to move in 3d is that vertex group so if we go in here and select the vertex group like this notice what this is going to do is this is going to displace this object based on the location of the sphere well what's cool about this and let's jump over into wireframe mode so you can see it what's cool about this is this is moving live so if i move either this plane or if I move the sphere itself, you can see how this is displacing the geometry based on the location of that sphere. So you can use that to create some pretty cool effects. And really all that's doing is that's just weighting that based on the location of the sphere and based on the vertex groups. And so you could, for example, adjust the width on this using the vertex weight paint tool so that you get different results. So there are a ton of advanced applications that we end up using this for, especially as we start getting into geometry nodes. So if you remember some of the tutorials we've done on geometry nodes, like the plant growth one, that really heavily relies on this vertex painting and the vertex groups inside of your model. But for now, um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this tutorial. If you're using vertex groups, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week if you like what i'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys